head is at or my head is at with some of when building something, you know, yeah. um, have you found with a lot of your coaches, like, so level wise. So if you start like a program, that's like a three, six month program or whatever. Yeah. And are you, and you do small groups, are you only coaching like one level or one age? Because obviously you can't really have a 14 year old with like a seven year old in the same mm -hmm. group. Mm -hmm. Um, so do you run, I remember seeing in one of your videos, you said you went from running a bunch of sessions to only running like three a week, um, because yes. you adopted this small group mentality. And mm -hmm. so, um, with that being said, you know, do you work with different levels or do you work with like one level and one age, or do you run multiple sessions a week, which I don't think you do. Cause you said you run three times mm -hmm. of different age groups. Mm -hmm. It's a good level. question. Good question. So when I when I made that transition to groups, I had kids of different age groups and different ability levels. Now, it was quite difficult at the beginning, but what I had to do is I had to change my coaching. And the way I changed my coaching is I made it all completely technical training, where if we did do like 1v1s, for example, or, or, or situations where it was competitive, then I made sure players of similar ages and ability levels were paired together but everything else was literally player and ball and everything you know they, they're doing the same drill but they're working by themselves in that group so there was okay. no pressure now what's going to happen with with your program and this is just something that, that happened naturally uh, is kids start to come and go and the ones that stay are then what happens is it's it's that's how the business then starts to grow because i remember for example i had one group of six players when i switched into groups uh, four of them were 10 years old and two of them were were nine over time the nine-year-olds left and then what happened was that another two 10-year-olds came in and that group just naturally became a group of uh, under 11s. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So sometimes you just have to adapt your training to what you're working with. Yeah. But what the most important thing is, you have to make sure you communicate that to parents. Okay, mm -hmm. because when parents when parents sit there and watch your session and they see right there's a seven year old there's a ten year old there's an eight year old you know they don't they don't all they see is the different age groups like they don't they don't know what's actually happening so you just have to make sure and this is something I learned very quickly over communicate with parents right yes I understand there's different age groups but this is how we're going to work with your child. And this is the type of training we're going to do to help them. Okay. okay. Now, some parents won't like it. Other parents will like you and they'll stick with you. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's part of the game. Yeah. Okay. But you have to just make sure that from, from a coaching perspective, you are ticking all the boxes. You're communicating, you're showing parents what you're working on. Okay. And you're just treating each individual as an individual rather than as like a team at a club.